Welcome back to the shop. Today we have a perfect handle uh, tire tool. This is like a tire spoon for, uh, for for prying. You put it on the inside of a rim. I'll see if I've got a rim around here to demonstrate later on. But uh, but anyway, anybody who's ever changed a, a bicycle tire or, or any kind of small lawn trailer tire or whatever, you know, you normally you normally go out and you get the the biggest the biggest screwdriver you can find, and then you you get in there and you really start prying the tube around and all that stuff. But you know the screwdrivers aren't necessarily ideal for it because you get the sharp edges and 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 you know when you're a kid you don't know what you're doing you stick the screwdriver in there and you get it too far in and you catch part of the tube and you pop it at least I did when I was a kid so anyway uh, screwdrivers are are better screwdrivers than they are tire tools uh, tire spoons so um, and I I actually had some legitimate tire spoons if I I might have one or two laying around I'll I'll show it if I can find it again. Um, but anyway, these this this is a tire spoon made by the Perfect Handle Company, and the the interesting thing about this tool is how I got it. One of my viewers had had commented on uh, we were actually started commenting on the 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 Scott Crafters channel and his Perfect screwdriver, and he says, "Oh, I sure would love to have one of those screwdrivers." <laughs> and how about you trade trade for something because I had mentioned that I, that I had picked up a couple more. I, I had, um, I had to do this, but anyway, I had picked up these three, and then my brother on top of that had gone out and picked up another three, so, so anyway, I've been trying to pick these up, uh, a little bit faster than I probably should be picking them up, but anyway, uh, I said, you know what, I could probably part with the, one of those, uh, with one of these screwdrivers, but, uh, how about a trade? Do you have something cool, something, something for the channel, so I get a little content and you get a screwdriver? And he sends me the picture of this. Apparently he had found it in an old barn, buried, and he had taken a wire wheel to it and cleaned it up and done a nice job cleaning it up. And and it's got very light use on it. It's uh from the pictures I had seen, I was you know, I was a little leery about him sending me this because it looked too nice in the pictures, and it is really nice, except for the scales are a little bit ill fitting. And, I, and I'm, I'm confident that they're not original. So so anyway, I was worried that this may have been an original tool and he was going to send me something and I wasn't going to restore it because... Anyway, but uh, but anyway, I was just sort of happy to see that this uh, that these scales could be... that I think I could improve on this. So um, so anyway, I, the Rusty Gun uh, was the gentleman I traded with and he mailed me these, uh, this nice tire spoon just on the hope that I'd send him... Um, one of my screwdrivers, which I did, of course, and I, I went ahead and sent him uh, a letter, and I sent him the screwdriver that I redid in one of my older videos, because I think that was the, probably the best one I had. Uh, all these other ones needed work, and this was so nice, uh, I thought I'd send him the best one I had. So anyway, Rusty, thank you very much. I, I really like having this. This is going to be a great restoration project. Uh, I hope I do it justice, and... Uh, and I like the tool so much that, you know, even even though I've got this one, I couldn't help myself. I went and got another one. <laughs> so, so I'm not sure how we're going to do this yet. We'll see. Uh, we'll see how it works out. Because this one, this one is just really beat to all hell. So, uh, it's it's just been murdered and mangled and it's it's really, really tough. But, but as you know, uh, so for a tire spoon to work effectively, you, you need two of them. So anyway, that's sort of the, 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 the logic behind this. If I had two matching ones, it'd be perfect. Uh, so anyway, now I do. Uh, how I do this restoration video, you know, that some... A lot of this stuff gets fleshed out in the editing parts. Uh, it doesn't necessarily... It's not instructional to, for you to watch me do the same thing twice. Uh, you can rewind if you want to watch me do something twice. So anyway, I will probably... Um, do the full restoration of this one and then maybe do a before and after picture of this one because this one is this is much rougher this is absolutely beat to shit and uh... anyway so i hope you enjoy the video again rusty thank you for the tool this is great I, uh, i'm gonna get started on this and and how i'm gonna proceed is i'm going to knock out these old rivets and I'm, this scale is the best fitting one of the two. So I'm going to uh, knock them out and see if it fits on either side. Uh, 
And if it does, then I'm going to use it as a template. If it doesn't, then, you know, I might go at it on my own and try to develop my own. But, but anyway, I'm not an expert with this kind of stuff. I've watched a couple other channels, and it seems like everybody has their own techniques. Um, and I don't particularly have a lot of woodworking tools, so I'm going to probably do this with uh, some hand tools. But uh, anyway, I'm going to get started. Alright, so as I suspected, these two scales, apparently is what they're called, they are not interchangeable. They do not fit from one side to the other. Uh, so, because they're not interchangeable, um, you know, it means I have to build two, two special ones. And what I'm going to do is I have a piece of 2x2 two two oak that I'm gonna whittle down and, and make fit. I, I, I wanted to do a really nice job with this one and I had bought some um, cherry, Brazilian cherry, really hard stuff. Uh, I think that's what this is. Um, yeah. Brazilian cherry knife scales. But they just happen to be exactly the width. I don't think, I don't think they would fit that they would fit in here and be wide enough to really bring it out to what the, the size should be. They would be just just short of what they should be height wise. Uh, they wouldn't give me any slack, wouldn't give me any... They, they, anyway, long story short is that these are going to have to go for another project because they're just not big enough in my estimation. So so anyway, I'm going to use this, this oak. I've used this on uh, the other project that I had done, the other tool handle restorations. Uh, now, now that I gave away my other screwdriver, you can't show you. But anyway, I used it on this one. I, I like the way the oak is. Uh, anyway, so so that's what I'm going to use on this. Now I'm going to bring this over to the sandblaster, and then the wire wheel, and then I'm going to get to work on the whittling the handle down. So what I'm going to do here is, um, is I'm going to take the larger of the two scales. I can tell that one has just got slightly wider dimension than the other. Um, so I'm going to take the larger of the two scales and I'm going to rough it out on this piece of oak. And then maybe I'll split it down the middle. If that, if that can save me some, some individual operations, uh, I don't know, that's sort of yet to be determined. I, I'm assuming that there might be some potential gains here. But if you've seen any of my other handle videos or woodworking videos, my secret to success is redoing mess ups. So, <laughs> so I'll tend to, tend to get it wrong several times and then finally get to the point where it seems uh, acceptable. So anyway, that's, that's where I'm going to go now. I'm going to...
Now that is a really coarse belt. That is, I don't know if you can see that, but I think that's 36 grit, 40 grit. Cubitron. It's, this is an expensive belt, but, but man, it really makes a world of difference. These brown belts are a dime a dozen. The, the, the material, just the thickness, the, the, the shit that goes into these, far better to spend some money on these. Uh, so that's the Cubitron, that one's really good, and I've had good luck with, uh, what's this, Stark, whatever. Uh, anyway, anything that's got some exotic color and is expensive is usually pretty good. But I'm sure somebody's going to catch on to that and start selling exotic colored shit soon. So, uh, so anyway. Uh, but for now, for what I'm doing, that worked pretty good. I'm going to split this thing in half now. And uh, see if it saves me any time. So when you're working on things, and you're just sitting here doing eh, arguably mindless work, which is just sanding, but you know, this actually takes a shitload of concentration, but it looks like it's mindless. <clears throat> At points you get a time to think, oh, well, you know, other stuff. So it's not just about sanding, so, <laughs> so anyway, while I'm sitting here contemplating the ways of the world, I said, you know what, I'm going to build another one of these, because I've got two. So before I get too far along on this junker, let me go ahead and outline a template for my next project so I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel next time. So anyway, that's that phallic symbol is my template for the next time. That'll save me a little bit of work later on. Alright, so we're going to let this drip epoxy all over my workshop for approximately a day. <laughs> and then I'm going to come back and drill the other two holes out, sand it down until it's uh, some rough size that I'm sort of happy with. Then I'll install the brass, then I'll uh, start shaping and finish, finish sanding it, and then uh, peening the brass out. So, day one. <laughs> 